George in Arizona, the sunny state. He writes to me and he says, what's the difference between a hardware crossover and a software crossover? Is one better than the other? Thanks for your time and for all you do and keep up the great work, George. Why, thank you, George. And a hardware crossover versus a software crossover, there's quite a difference. Hardware crossovers are where we have a collection of passive parts, capacitors, inductors, which are coils of wire, resistors. And between capacitors, resistors, and coils, we can make a crossover, meaning that a low-pass filter, which lets only low stuff down, uh, you know, low frequencies come through, is what we would put on a woofer. And a high-pass filter, where we only let high frequencies through, are what we would put on a tweeter. So a tweeter, a simple low-pass hardware filter for a tweeter would just be a capacitor. And that'll roll off the bottom end. For a woofer, you're going to use a coil and maybe a capacitor. So that's basically how most speaker systems are built and designed. I would say 99.99999% of all high-end audio speakers are passive crossovers, hardware crossovers. Now, a electronic crossover, I would say the 99.99999% of consumer speakers that you might buy, Sonos, um, if you have a, a, an, an Apple Home Pod and a, uh, an Alexa Pod or whatever you've got, or anything that is self-amplified to where you plug the speaker or the unit into the wall, that's going to have an electronic crossover because it is internally amplified. And there, we can use much less expensive parts than we can in a hardware crossover. Okay, so let me try and explain that real quick. When we build, like, say, the FR30, our new loudspeaker, we're putting in hundreds of dollars into big, giant printed circuit boards, beautiful coils of wire, expensive capacitors, big ones, because that's what's required in a hardware crossover. When we self-amplify, let's say we made a speaker that you plugged in the wall and maybe it had three little amplifiers, a tweeter amp and, let's just call it a two-way. You have a tweeter amp and a woofer amp, okay? The crossover for that is kind of the same. We're still using a capacitor and you know some other components, but they're very small because the input impedances of the amplifiers are very high. So where a capacitor I might put onto a tweeter, I would have to have, you know, we use really expensive tweeter capacitors, maybe three or four microfarads, and it's gonna cost us 15, 20, 25 dollars for that capacitor because we use film and foil and it's all very important. We're putting all the energy into, you know, that's going through that capacitor. With an active circuit, an electronic crossover, we could use like a 0.01 or a 0.2, a fine little cap, and it's sure it's going to be a quality cap, but it's so tiny, it's a hundred times smaller, ten times smaller than what we would use in the big crossover, so it's a lot cheaper. But now we have to pay for the amplifier. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> All right, so that's the difference between a hardware crossover and an electronic crossover in a loudspeaker. Okay. Thanks for the question. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.